everybody. It's KT. And Delany. And you're watching Fat TV World on public access. Yes. This is our first one since Christmas, even though you guys well, saw some stuff at the beginning. Right. Yes. But this is our first one since Christmas. So 2020. Here we are. Yeah. Happy even though New Year. Some of you are going to see this in March. So. Oh, yeah. Happy New March. <laughs> Happy 320. Three, we're close to 420, right? Right. So, um, how, how are you? What you been doing? What I you know. been doing? What you been doing? I have been healing. I've been in recovery. Oh, yeah. So, anybody who wants to know my business, just private message me because I am not going to take up the time to talk about it. No, here. all you got to do is so. go to her Facebook page because it's on there and it's like this long. <laughs> Whatever. With like 50 million comments. Um, but I will yes, tell you. In between I, my viral post about Lizzo. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Which Let's, one? Which my okay, viral post actually, about Lizzo, I, or you know, I um, it's enough about Lizzo because we oh. talk about her a lot. What I want, let's bring out Julian Michaels really quick. Oh, Julian Michaels. Yes. yes. Let's yeah. talk about that. Go ahead. Tell them what's going on. Oh, okay. Well, as if you didn't know already, Jillian Michaels, she uh, basically body shamed Lizzo. Um, she's been doing it for quite a while. Right. But I mean, it's not even, this isn't even just about Lizzo, to be but, clear. But she went after Al Roker, too. She did. Yes, she's got, yes. She goes after everybody. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's what her brand is. And she basically, somebody was just wanting to talk about body positivity in general. And this was, I think, a buzz, BuzzFeed or Buzz After Buzz night talk show or yeah, something. Yeah, one of those. But anyway, she was kind of like, well, she, Jillian Michaels is not on board with body positivity. She basically thinks that it's promoting obesity. Um, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, Basically, she missed the whole point of body positive, which is it's for all shapes and sizes. And right. it's, it's, it, it's more body acceptance, loving who you are. You can still want to work on yourself and do, you know, you, everybody wants to do something sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have the right to not do that. And she just totally didn't get it. And she kind of in doing this, she shamed our queen Lizzo, made yeah. the biggest mistake Why would doing you do that? that. Don't do and that. And she's Don't go getting after her. like roasted on Twitter and all social media. And I mean, it's just very clear that like her brand is not working for anymore. For well, anybody. her brand is, we all know that her brand bullying. is crazy. Bullying, yeah. phobia. And that, it's, it's, that it's, it's, well, there's a pension out for the getting rid of the biggest loser, and we should be doing that too. Yes, I, I signed it. Did yeah. you sign it? Uh, yes, I did. You did? Okay, yes, I cool. Did. Well, of even her, I did. her former co-host of The Biggest Loser, um, he had, uh, in the past, he's had a heart attack. And he's the the epitome of what fitness, what we think fitness should be, where you're going to the gym every day, and he's eating what is called the right foods, the right foods. And he had a heart attack. And his opinion on this, he gave some feedback. He said, it's none of my business. Basically, he's like, my, my, I, my. Any comment about anyone's body is none of my business. That's what he said. Exactly. Unless you come to me and you ask me, I'm not going to say a word. Well, that's good. Yeah. But let's go. We're going to get our first guest <gasps> of the year. And so this so is a exciting. really good friend of Delany's. Yes. So Delany, introduce and the clip that we're going to see first. I would love to introduce the fabulous Alexandra Boylan. Da -da -da. Is drum rolls, drum rolls. Drum roll. And tell me what we're about to see. Okay. Rose. So we are going to start with um, seeing, um, God, she's got so many movies, but this is a clip or actually a trailer for her film Catching Faith 2. And we're about to see the teaser for that. All right, here you go. Ball. <gasps> my favorite football star. That was my favorite grandma. I gotta tell you, it's been a fun time watching you play on TV, though. You made this old coach proud. Look at me now. Ruined. They let me off the team. You think this was my choice? What am I going to do now? Oh, you're not ruined unless you give up. You thought about my offer? Coaching teenagers doesn't exactly sound like an adventure. You might be surprised. My son lost his career. My mother keeps running away. My daughter is getting married to my ex-best friend's son. And I literally just started my dream job. Things have really changed. I'm the mother of the bride. It is not a competition. Yes, it is. And I don't want Jesse to win. Alexa. Jesse. Oh, it's so good to see you again. I'm so sorry I hurt you, Uncle Coco. OK. She reminds me of Cinderella's evil stepmother. Maybe it was a mistake bringing the wedding home. I just thought you were coming out here to listen to me. Everything's always about you. Why don't you go do something for someone else and teach those kids some football? Coach, a play action fake? Hey, armchair quarterback. Either shut it or get over here. Do this. You guys are looking at the new assistant coach of the Cougars. Wow. We decided to take the pressure off of everyone in a loop. What? 
My name is Alexa Taylor, and I need help. Hi, Alexa. <laughs> but I've found throughout life that sometimes the little side streets, those are the ones that give you the greatest adventures. Because you see, Bo, at the end of your life, it's not your accomplishments that matter. It's the people you spend time with. I say let the adventure continue. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's very cool. I have actually seen the movie, and I've worked on it. But anyway, this enough about me. Really... Here we are. Alexander no, 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 Boylan. What about you? I know. <laughs> Alexander Boylan. Let her talk. Let her talk. Hi. Good job, girl. I love it. It looks Thank really cool. You. Thanks for having me. I've, yes. I've seen you. We're all part of, like, this big WIMPs. Uh, women in the <laughs> Women there's film. a lot of women's networks that that are here. Even yes. though there's a not not enough representation in Hollywood Agreed. on the forefront, there's a lot of us in the back end, a and lot. we all know each other and all that. We all know of each other. Yeah. But Alexandra, tell us about yourself. Oh my goodness! So I um I. My first feature film that I made is a thriller called Home Sweet Home, and that's available everywhere. And then I transitioned from that into faith-based family movies. Interestingly enough. The most opposite, but um, I actually saw a humongous lack in female-driven in faith-based. And I made a film called Catching Faith that was a tiny movie in 2014 that went on to become the top five consistent selling movie for the distribution company. I wonder why, maybe because it's about a woman. <laughs> and uh, we just made a sequel and we released it in September, which is what you guys just saw. You saw Catching Faith to the sequel. Um, and then I have a Christmas movie out called Wish for Christmas. And I have a teen girl movie coming out this year called Switched. And, and did I'm you so produce all that? Direct? Yeah, so I what, what, wrote, produced all of, well, all the faith-based films. I'm a writer, producer. I take the films from conception to completion, and then we go on to sell them to distribution companies. Yes. So we do it all. Sometimes I'm wardrobe if I need to be. Sometimes I'm crafty. You know, you do everything you need to do for independent filmmaking. It, this is true. Yeah. Right. yeah. And yeah. you're in them as well. And I'm in she's, them, She's yeah. also actress. Yes. And, and she yes. does such a great job in everything. Yeah, I play the yeah. mean wow, friend in trades. Catching Faith. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun I got to play. And actually the lead. Such a fun role. Yeah, well, the lead Lorena Segura is one of my best friends of 20 years. So we had a lot of fun playing, nem you know, arch nemesis in the film yeah well you guys already have that natural chemistry from yeah. being really good friends but you're also both really good actresses yeah yeah and it was it's just fun to watch both of you so yeah, yeah. and um, so oh, let's talk about this little book you have oh, in front of you it's just book. been sitting here uh, well <laughs> everybody yes i brought this book because she wait you have this is not your you have another book at this point right no helena or, santos and i published a book together oh that's what it was this okay. is my book just me yes. yes okay so i love this book because alexandra it's just full of a lot of advice but why did you write the book, Alexandra? Uh, well, because I, well, the past couple of years, I get a lot of emails and phone calls of people being like, can I pick your brain? Can I ask you, how did you, you know, literally Home Sweet Home was made with $10,000, a five-person team, and we went on to sell it to a major distribution company, and that propelled our career. So, of course, everyone's going to ask you, like, how did you come from nothing and make something? And But the problem was I did used to go to coffee with everyone, and I tried to, like, give them advice, and I want to help people and inspire people, and then I just couldn't do it anymore. Right. And uh, actually, I started writing for our friend Helena Santos a uh, publication called Ms. in the Biz um, and I started writing for them in 2000 in 11 or 2012, right. which is right when I was doing my first feature film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my articles span my entire career from my first feature to my third, fourth feature. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what if I took all my articles and write some more and compile it and kind of there you go. That is literally <laughs> how I created my own career in Hollywood is in this book. And be, she started out as a homeless actress. I mean, she I was homeless, homeless, right? I moved out here in oh, 1999. It's the homeless, yeah, the she really story. was. And I did. I looked at my car for a <laughs> oh, month. She, when she I was did. 19 in 1999. Yes. I'm 40. Wow. And I'm proud. You've been out here since 1999? Yeah. I moved here in 1999. I was a little whippersnapper. I was like, <laughs> I am going to be a movie star. <laughs> but then. And, but then you also, like, you were here, but then something made you move to New Mexico, right? Yeah, so what I was that? spent 10 years, like, pounding the pavement as an actor, but then I was, like, doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And in 2009, I woke up and I was like, oh, my gosh, if I keep doing the same thing, I'm going to wake up 40, 50, 60, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I packed my bags and I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I just needed a mental break from the industry. 
And it was the best thing I've ever done right. in my life because I met my filmmaking team and I got healthy. And it's cheap. I, I think sometimes you need a break from L.A. You got to go somewhere where it's cheap. Yeah. Was this so. during the time when, when there was a lot of tax incentive going on in New Mexico? Yeah. I, worked, I was yeah. Kat Denning standing on Thor. Like, there were huge stuff. Like, I worked, I was Megan Fox's stand-in. She's, like, she's been a stand-in for almost everybody. Yeah. At really? this I do a lot I think of you have. I've done yeah. a lot of stand-in as yeah. a survival gig. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I feel like you could even write a book just about stand-in. Oh, I could right. write a book you about stand-in. Yeah, I only did it one time, and I thought that was the craziest experience ever. Yeah. You know, I, st- I stood in for Molly Shannon mm-hmm. for Tal- Talladega Nights, only because in the South, I was the only dark haired girl there with yeah. wet, with light skin. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you get a stand in. So, what is yeah. that? Tell everybody what a stand in actually does. Yes. A stand in is you are the uh, second to the actor. So, you need to have their hair color and their skin tone, and uh, the actors come in and block the scene, and then they go back to their trailer to do hair and makeup and relax, and the stand ins run through the scene with the camera, with the director, Lighting. with the cinematographer, mm-hmm. and then they practice, the camera practices on you the whole scene. Yes. And then once everybody, the crew, has it, we step away as the stand ins, and the actor comes yep. in and they start shooting. Yep. And see, to me, the stand in, if you want to be an actor, you want to be a stand in. Right. For because sure. Because you really learn the business and the craft of acting so true. just being a stand And you're there for a long time. You put the time in. You're there the whole day. Yeah. And yeah, you watch how everyone's doing their job. It's a great way to also, if you're trying to figure out what do you want to do on a film set, I think that's a great job because you're watching, you're really, you're the centerpiece, so you get to see what everybody else is doing around right. you. Yeah. You might be like, oh, I love what they're doing. That's a job I want to do. Exactly. You know? So rewriting a little bit with New Mexico, then yeah. what made you, what propelled you to come back to LA? Well, we made our first, my team and I made our first feature, Home Sweet Home, the thriller. Literally five of us in the New Mexico desert in a house in the middle of nowhere, a home invasion. Uh, it's about a, a girl who returns to her childhood abandoned house, a woman returns her childhood abandoned house and there's squatters living in it and they don't want to leave and they start messing with her. Um, The villain's a girl and I played the victim. So it's really fun. I always wanted to tell female driven stories and I was like, you know, we've seen male villains plenty. Let's make it a woman villain and see how a woman messes with your head. (laughs) We had so much fun. So then we did that movie and then I moved back to LA and brought the feature here and was going to try to get it in a festival or sell it. So. And this was the this was the one that you were approached by a distributor, right? Or No, what? so I got I had submitted it fun fact. I submitted it to like 25 film festivals, didn't get into anything. Thought, "Oh my gosh, what do you do with my movie?" It just sat on a hard drive, and I went to a women in film event and I met Bridget Jurgens and Jen Sparks from Dog and Pony. Mm-hmm. They said, "Let's do your poster. You need a poster. You don't poster. even Yep. And you don't even need to go to You're not She goes, "You're a horror movie, a thriller. You're not going to go to a film festival. You need a sales rep." I was like, "Okay, how do I do that?" She mentored me. I got a sales agent, and we sold it at American Film Market before the market was over through Boom. our sales Man. agent. Yeah, they really That's did. Great. And I, if there's one thing, and I've learned so much from you, even just being her friend, you just learned, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. But I want to say that a poster, do, don't skimp on the movie poster. Most like important that, part about your entire film. It really is. Well, it's, it's, your, the it's, the, it's the, like, whole, it, it, it encompasses what it's about. And it's like the icon of it. Like yeah. I, when I when you think of po- when you think of a movie, I always go, I remember the poster. Oh, totally. I, and yeah. you can see if you need to be able to see it from far away, mm-hmm. and you need to be able to see the little thing on iTunes yeah. at the same time. Yeah, right. you know? I mean, it's the first thing that your audience is looking at is the picture. Oh, then totally. they're going to watch the trailer. Then they're going to decide if they're going to rent the movie. And because when I'm going through Netflix, I'm looking at the poster. Yeah. You know, That's what sells the movie. Because if it looks interesting, if the poster yeah. looks interesting, yeah. I'm going to watch the movie completely. And Dog yeah. and Pony does such an incredible job. Dog and Pony. So, yeah, and then like since then, all these years later, like you can go into Walmart. Like I've gone in there, I've seen your movies there. We have had they stand movie. out. They stand out. Every single one of my movies, the other movies have been in Walmart. Because Every single dog one? and pony, and they're amazing. Wow. Isn't Every this great? One. Nice. And it's just yeah. so fun to walk into Walmart or yeah. Target or wherever, right? Is no, that Target? Not, not yet. just Walmart. Oh, just Walmart. Okay, because I've only seen Walmart. it at Walmart. Yeah. That's why. Walmart's so no the Target. number one big box selling store in America. Yes. Boom. Mm-hmm. More than Target. But it's fun to walk in there, even in North Carolina, and be like, and they own Voodoo too. This is my friend's yeah. movie right yeah. here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of your Everybody. friend's movie, yeah. let's introduce the next clip that you brought with you okay. today. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, this one is called At Your Own Risk, and it's about two women who own a PR company, and they get called to and asked to test out a new geocaching game deep in the New Mexico desert, and things go a little bit crazy. Oh. This is so beautiful. 
do you think that maybe we've gotten a little too wrapped up in our company and we've forgotten that places like this exist? I hate the desert. What? The desert has a mind of its own. It's like it's out to get you. <laughs> We're not going to die, Tay. We're looking to hire a PR firm to help us launch this very unique adventure experience in the style of a treasure hunter geocache, if you will. The great thing is you'd be paid for doing a beta test. And if you successfully complete the journey, you're hired. There's coordinates. Great. Let them know that we love this part of the game. This is great. Look at this car. This set deck's amazing. It's gorgeous. Look what's sitting outside of our tent. Is this part of the game? I don't like this. Did we read the rules wrong? No, no we didn't. There's supposed to be someone here. We made it to the last cache. Come out! We want our money and we want to go home! Wait, they want us to know they can see us. At least that means they didn't abandon us in the middle of nowhere. You think they're gonna start telling us the truth now? I want to keep playing the game. You want to finish the game after all of this? Yeah, I do. Let's just get home. Maybe there's some things about me you don't know. There's gotta be a mistake. How did they send us here? I can't take it anymore. They're winning. Then I wanna win. back and say, wow, that's really yeah. good. But well, it's because that's all I know it always is really good, exactly. too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, we have talented guests. So, um, <laughs> so okay, at your own risk, I helped on that one as well. Yes, you <laughs> did. I got to act in it. Yes, yes. you did. But even going in, you guys were very secretive with the script. <laughs> so we still have to be a little secretive so people will actually watch the film. But this is very much like what is going on here. And it's just Helena and just Alexandra for, what, 99.9% .9 of the film? Yeah. Like, we, oh, yeah, we only see other characters very briefly. Mm -hmm. and yeah, 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 I don't want to give it away. Yeah, you don't like, want to spoiler alert. It's you want just, to see it. There's a twist. There's a twist ending. It's just these two women yeah, the entire the whole time. Movie, and yeah. it's a full story. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's amazing. So, oh, sorry. It's okay, so let's um, talk about it. <laughs> well, we actually made At Your Own Risk after we had done, I think we had made three uh, three features and then sold those with, uh, to distribution companies. We really wanted to learn about self-distribution. So we actually made At Your Own Risk always knowing that we would self-distribute that film and not sell it to a distribution company. Right. So it was really a learning process and it was a super indie. We made it for $1,000 all in on set. How the? <laughs> with yeah. a drone. And, and how, drone. how, how drone. long is it? It's 90 minutes? It's full length, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a yeah. full length feature, $1,000 production, and then a little bit more into, you know, distribution. And then we did hire Distriber mm -hmm. uh, to put us on iTunes and Amazon. And then sadly, they went out of business. So we lost Well, no, that. Let's, let's, uh, let, let, let's go into Distributor yeah. really quick. Because okay. I really <laughs> want to talk about please, this. Please, please. Because when did you put yours on Distributor? Just recently, like four months ago. So did, have you gotten your money back from them? We did get our money for the first month okay. mm -hmm, that we were up. So the, if anybody doesn't know, Distributor is... They not only did they shut down, they were still they were taking money from filmmakers. So one of the things you do not do is have the same bank account that your royalties come in that you're paying out other things that run your company. Mm -hmm. So that's what's that's happened. And they and I cannot believe like the criminality yeah. that has happened because wow. the reason I'm really mad is because my first feature documentary, we were a distributor, I was like for years i think we put it out in 2016 so we were with them for years mm -hmm. and then this happened mm -hmm. and like they owe thousands and thousands of dollars to not only me but other filmmakers so i just yeah. wanted to say that i'm really pissed off about that <laughs> but don't let that discourage you from self-distributing right. just make sure to research and just know at any time somebody's gonna go down because that's his business right that's true well but the good to get back to a positive spin on this though is that alexandra and helena they've been doing so many panels because everyone has been trying to find or pick your brain in a sense of yeah. how did you make a full length feature with uh, for a thousand dollars right mm -hmm. so um do you have one quick thing you want to say about that like well 
I, there's so much I know. No, but, no, I yeah. would say the quick thing is we have really talented people. Yes. And you don't need a lot of money if you have incredibly talented people behind the camera. Right. And I think a lot of films spend money in the wrong places mm -hmm. and we're really wise and we we're, we know where we need to spend money and where we don't. And we're, mm -hmm. that's the same for my next feature is 700,000 and we're having meetings with people and we're like, we know we don't need that. That's just what Hollywood tells everybody that, that they, they need. need. It's so true. And a lot of times we just have extra people on set just eating your crafty and they don't, that we don't need that position right. because our guys are so talented. John Graham, who directs everything, and uh, Richard Galley, my cinematographer, those two are the only two we had on set of, uh, at Your Own Risk and that's all we needed. They that's were, they are so, their eye is so incredible that they don't need anybody else. They, yeah. And we shot, you know, in the, in the New Mexico desert, so there was no lights. It was all daytime. Mm -hmm. You know, we just used the, something called the sun as a free lighting. <laughs> that's that my favorite. Awesome. I always what say natural light <laughs> yeah. is the best Isn't light to use. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's yeah. So, you know, some flags. <laughs> so like, I have a question and we, I, she's got, so people are going to have to Google everything you do because we don't have enough time in and this. And watch all my movies. But I, it has been said to me recently and it's just really bothered me, but I would, I think it's important to hear it from you, right? But this has been actually said to me is that God has not been in Hollywood. God is not here, uh, but God is coming back. But God, God has not been here. And it just is really troubling to me because I've lived here for 14 years myself. Wow. And I feel God everywhere and see God everywhere. And mm -hmm. I've met the best humans who are most Christ-like actually here in Los Angeles. Shocker, but it's true. Wow. So um, that's my opinion. But I'd like you, because you're the most respected, faith-based filmmaker ever. Oh, I <laughs> well, love that, I know. Delany. <laughs> but no, what, it's Thank just you. important to hear what you have to say about it, because I'm afraid that when I say it, it doesn't mean anything to those people, because I'm not technically making faith-based films. But you can still have an opinion about Thank that you. as a faith-based person. Thank Absolutely. you. Who works in the industry? Uh, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I, you know, that's such an interesting thing is I think God is very alive in Hollywood. And when I, he's alive in what I'm doing because the miracles on our set are not of us. They are of God. I think sometimes, yeah, I mean, we'll have the most un incredible thing happen to people like, how did you make that happen? I'm like, you're not going to like my answer. Right. I swear <laughs> it was God. Like he just kind of like we needed something and he plopped it down. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I think once you, if you are a believer and you're looking for that kind of community, once you start trying to find it, you'll find plenty of people who believe in it. I do think there's a little stigma in Hollywood that sometimes people are afraid to tell people I'm a Christian because of unfortunately, when loud people speak, people think that that's speaking for all of the Christians. Right. So then people meet me and they're like, oh, I just know who you are. And I'm like, you don't know who I am. Exactly. Please don't judge me right. because somebody else said something that mm -hmm. I do not, you know, right. yeah. but, um, but I host a, a Christian women entertainment group. I try to do it like once a month at my house mm -hmm. and it's always packed and um, right. there's more and more people coming out, you know, community. And then there's just, and I do think that God is very alive. I know a lot of people work at studios who are believers. and It's amazing. You know, it's incredible. Yeah. That's what I try to tell these naysayers. I'm yeah. like, God has been here. Oh, God's you mean, everywhere. Especially a lot right. of people outside of Hollywood <laughs> I say been this. Clear. People outside okay. of Hollywood okay. have been saying Oh, yeah. This. And I'm oh, like, yeah. mm, it's not true. Well, I've got to say, what the problem is, is that, and I'm, I, I, don't, I don't ever judge anybody on their religion, their faith, anything like that. Believe what you want. Everybody's the same, you know. Right. But, right. What's being shown of Hollywood is that we're nothing, we're nobody's conservative, everybody's super, super liberal. And mm -hmm. I've met a gamut of, oh, you know, sure. of it's people. It's, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that on the same set, you can have a Christian and an atheist working together right. and they work together. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, hello. And, and I've have... never, I've never even thought to ask, and I did get to help do PA work for Catching Faith too. But it, this is a good question for faith-based filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Do you, do, do you work only with faith-based filmmakers or do you work with everybody? Absolutely like, what do you do? not. We're open to everybody. Yeah. Um, we do not say you have to be a Christian. Um, we only ask We only ask of our crew and cast that they don't make fun of Christians. Yeah. We've had that problem where it's like a lot of the people who we, we've shot our films are from churches or people who've donated their homes or donated their location for us. So we just ask that people don't swear. Well, people shouldn't be swearing anyway. Sometimes we have right. kids on set. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I'm like, there's right. a kid over there. Please stop swearing. Um, but also 
also just a respect that that's what these people believe and respect them, you know, and then usually everybody does. And, right. you know, a lot of times we've had just incredible things happen on set where somebody might have fallen away from their faith and then met us and we're like, you guys are actually really cool people. Right. And wow. And then maybe come back to their face. So I would so never, we're, we, we look for talent first. Amen, talent first. Alexandra. I'm so glad. I'm sending this yeah. out to these naysayers. Once okay, this is yeah. out. But, okay, what did it you think? Re, where we are at right now, um, where I don't, as opposed to when this gets out, you mm -hmm. know, Oscar nominations have come out. I know. What did you think about hearing the Oscar uh, nominations? Yes. I just feel so bad for uh, Greta Gerwin. She There's should second have year. been Isn't nominated. Isn't this the second year or third second second nomination. time where her movie was nominated, but she was not nominated as a director? Was it Lady Bird? Or Lady was it, Bird. it was Lady Bird, right. Yep. Okay, yep. yeah. And, and, and the director of Harriet, she should have been nominated. That Harriet? I heard, so I haven't dope. seen it yet, but I heard A Beautiful Day in Neighborhood was really well oh, done. Oh, yeah, that's it's right. Female director. I, I, I heard Honey Boy is great. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, yeah, Honey Boy. Um, all I'm going to say, if you look Queen at Slim. all of the nominations, it's the Big Boys Club for the last 20 years. Yeah. Well, it's, it's big, <laughs> and I'm just going to put it out there it, because it's facts. It's also very white. So it's 80, I believe it's 84% white, the Academy Award voters, mm -hmm. and then it's 60 68 or 64% male. That's that. That's kind of ridiculous. That's not what our world looks like. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So it has to be more equal, and we're just not, we're still getting the white male. It's just more frustrating yeah. that there aren't more female directors getting studio movies. I mean, you what, know what I mean? And that's a very see? obvious thing. No, they're and, not hiring women to and hold direct on, One of the studio things that's movies. really making me mad is that they're saying Parasite is a Hollywood film, and oh, look, we're being diverse. Parasite is not a Hollywood film. That is a foreign film. And Hello. it is, it's under best film. And then also best foreign film. I right. mean, so I was like, I have a little oh. bias on that one because for me that was the best film ever. But it's not but a Hollywood it's film. It's, it's definitely not a yeah. Hollywood film. It's not a Hollywood film. But for me, I'm like, man, I've never seen. To me, that's the best film ever. But real quickly, did y'all see Hustlers? Did you guys see? I did. Uh, yeah. Did you? Okay. I loved it. Did you? Did. Well, what Lizzo did you? was in it. I guess I should have. Okay, for I didn't me, love it. for me, I usually don't even go see movies about strippers, <laughs> and I just want to say the reason why I loved it, and I think we can agree on this, is to see a movie about strippers but not with the male gaze was right, very, yeah. like, I was like, whoa, this is a movie that doesn't have the male gaze on it, and I just saw a whole nother movie. Well, like, and yeah. also, that was a predominantly female uh a crew. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was like mm -hmm. 80, yeah. 80 or 90 percent. Right. Like, there was yeah. a lot of women on A that. lot. That's yeah. wonderful. No, it was awesome. I love that part of yeah. it. I just didn't love the story. Right. I felt like it, the story wasn't super ex executed that well. Right. Once mm -hmm. I even learned about the true story, I probably would have made it a little bit differently mm -hmm. than they made it. But I mean, I thought overall that part of it was awesome. Like, I mean, Jennifer Lopez, hello. Right. You are I mean, gorgeous. I mean, I'm telling you. you are and how old is she? She's like 80 and she yeah, looks like she's, she's 80 starting. and her butt won't quit. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? I love that, Hollywood. <laughs> And, not saying, um, and I, I love Jennifer Lopez, and not saying she's the best actress, but my favorite movie of her is Selena. Oh my God! I mean, I'm Selena. always Selena. Selena. I mean, out of sight. Yeah. She's done some, and U-Turn is one of my favorite films, and she's in U-Turn. She's been in some she's good been stuff. She's been in some good stuff. Mm -hmm. But what would you say with the Oscars? Because I know we're yeah. probably gonna have to roll out. Wrap saying, it up. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. But with Oscars, what is there anything you can think of that could make a great big statement now? Like for me, I was talking to a friend earlier, and we were saying we think actresses just don't need to attend the Oscars. What do you think? It would be effective to get a change going right now. Oh my gosh. I don't <laughs> To get them know. to listen. I mean, they're not going to not attend because they're nominated for an Oscar right. and they shouldn't lose out on being nominated and getting to go to that. Like, I'm nominated for the Movie Guide Awards this year and I'd be really sad if they were like, all women, don't show up. And I'd be like, I don't, get, you know? Right. So I, I you. don't know. I just think that... I don't, I mean, we just need to like a call to action to the women who are heading up studios to make sure that women are on the list to hire stu to hire women directors. Yeah. I worked on Agent Carter as a stand-in and I will say, are we out of time? Almost. We're out of time? Keep going. It's keep going. Keep going. Oh, okay, okay. Girl, we love uh, you. Sorry. <laughs> I worked on Agent Carter as uh, Haley Atwell's stand-in who plays Peggy Carter. Right. And we were on set and we've been, you know, did all these episodes and I'm like, ah, oh, we've not had any women directors. And they were like, oh, there aren't any women this season directors. I was like, this is a woman Women's show. No, that's yeah. a woman show. And there's not yeah. one woman on the list to direct this season. And they were like, nope. And then we came back for second season. Again, 
no women. No. And I was like, it I just does to me it's like who made that decision not to hire any women and that's where we need to get to the top of the decision makers and have women in that place or we need to get there ourselves. Yes, right. we do. So we can send the ladder over to someone else. Ding, ding, ding. Right. She just said it. We I need know. to get there. We need to get there. That's we need what to I'm get trying to do. Ourselves. Because for me, Academy Awards, whatever, let's make our own award show. Right. Our yeah. own. But we've got to wrap this up. <laughs> okay. Before we get on a woman rant. We're going to have her back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could. I know. We so, on that. <laughs> Alex, tell everybody where they can find you. Okay. Um, Alexandra Boylan. You can find me on Instagram at Alexandra Boylan. You can find me on Facebook, Alexandra Boylan, and Twitter, aboylan4. And of course, Delany, where can you find us? Okay, so you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Fat TV World. Also, we have a website out now. Yes, fattvworld.com. Yes. It launched last week. We're pretty, so excited about it. It's pretty like us. It could be it's like pretty. six weeks now yeah. if you're just seeing this. Yeah, like a year from now, you know. But. Tons of content. Tons. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, we will see you next week. Yay. And. Anything you want to say? I just love my friend Alexandra Boylan, oh, and everybody Delaney. needs to freaking follow her. And Thank like you. you guys, she's making she's one of the ones out here moving mountains, and she's doing it as an independent filmmaker. And I'm so proud of her. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank <laughs> That's you. It. Thanks, guys. Thank you.